Hi all, let's have a look at another fascinating encounter between the mighty Stockfish 11 and Leela ID 62329. This is on a very fast time control, one minute with one second increment. And the opening scene set is in the Robash or modern defense. So it's not as Robash as people think the modern defense. Let's have a look at this game. So G6 from Leela playing black. D4, Bishop G7. We go into the Mad Dog variation. Bishop C4 eyeing the sensitive F7 square. So this is often uh, something attacking players don't grow out of, trying to hit this sensitive square immediately. Knight F6, Queen E2 with ideas of E5. It looks quite dangerous. Black castles, white castles, Bishop G4. This is the end of the book. So this is the book position we're exploring. Uh, so we have c3 in this particular game, knight bd7, h3, and Leela gives up the light square bishop. And now plays an immediate e5. We have bishop dropping back to b3, a5, as if a4 might be useful. That's stopped in its tracks. Stockfish plays a4. Queen e7, d5. And now c6. This is open to some frontal pawn risk. Anytime white potentially takes here this d6 pawn might actually be quite sensitive uh, so we have c4 and the idea is not to take on d5 that would open up some squares if you take on d5 a bit of a downside later that c4 square could be used for example for a knight uh, to go into that square and then hit d6 look at b6 look at e5 so that c4 square could be useful so this tension is actually maintained here with knight c5 and this this knight is difficult to dislodge with b4 here it's hitting that bishop uh, the bishop is protected at the moment uh, but there's also pressure on e4 so it comes to defend the e4 pawn we have knight f7 knight c3 rook a e8 disregarding the d6 pawn any potential issue with uh, white taking on c6 and in fact white looks as though uh, is that it is quite keen on d takes c6 at some point f5 very aggressive taking e4 this gives white uh, the opportunity to put more pressure now on d6 so this aforementioned idea of d takes looking at d6 looks to have extra venom here Leela is not worried g takes f5 believe it or not so this represents a positional pawn sacrifice, basically, because white does play now d takes c6. Is it enough to win this pawn? The queen takes the pawn. Uh, it's interesting to check out also rook takes d6. From my brief investigations after king h8, it seems as though black can even afford to sacrifice two pawns and get uh, an interesting position, potentially, but not like knight e5 in fact knight e6 is needed yeah because knight d5 is quite strong there and this particular position two pawns down is fascinating uh, for example here with rook g8 there's some compensation on the g file and with bishop d4 hitting the queen this kind of scenario if white has to counter sack the exchange because it's starting to look as if black's got very aggressive play uh, then uh, this should be very nice for black. So if white has to counter sack the exchange, uh, it should be uh, about even in this position. So quite complicated based on the possibility of rook takes d6. Uh, but in the game, yeah, we have actually queen takes d6, knight e5. So we have a potential entrenched knight on d3, a kind of octopus knight. If you're aware of that term, Raymond King coined the term from a Karpov Kasparov game, which is one of my favorite games actually of all time between them, where there was this octopus knight which kind of dominated the position. So queen takes, rook takes, bishop e3, and we have knight cd3. So the knights protecting each other, entrenchment in that d3 square, very interesting. f4 trying to undermine the knights, but now. Uh, it's quite a committal move. So before, I mean, pawns don't go backwards, but so before checking out that pretty committal move, if, say, rook a, b1, it seems from my uh, investigations 
that uh, say say white does this it seems as though this should be stable enough for black even though blacks are pawned down uh, any time like this for example knight takes b2 is a, is a possibility to get the pawn back and it should be about even even if there's a bit of counterplay uh, there's tactics which uh, are nice for black and it should end up in an even position nearly even uh, roughly even so anyway so f4 was played yes pretty committal that pawn is pinned we have rook f1 rook b7 b3 so white maintains the claim to an extra pawn here we have knight going to b4 bishop d1 uh, now we have knight the other knight going into d3 so it's an amazing blockade position the pawn on c6 is really important here to keep the knight out of uh, d5 and b5 uh, you know we have this backward pawn here on that semi open b file so there's positional trump cards for black uh, the bishop's kind of passive a little bit passive tied down to f4 here this knight's doing a good job of hitting f4 and also uh, making it difficult to use rook f2 if needed and you can see that black could be poised for putting pressure on g2 we have rook b1 in fact bishop g7 knight e2 h5 as if trying to lock down the kingside now that was an emergent opportunity here the knights just interrupted h5 and black's seizing that opportunity so knight d4 h4 to that lockdown of the g uh pawn potentially you know on passant of g4 now we have bishop e2 uh here it's just not possible to hit the pawn uh because black would just take that and then the knight would drop off so that pawn's not going anywhere for a moment we have bishop e2 c5 knight e6 and yeah Leela's giving up the bishop pair it's quite dramatic this scene here I thought we have an entrenched knight situation the two knights versus the two bishops a nice g file with extra perks that the knight on d3 stops the natural rook f2 and also rook b2 is inhibited so both the defensive measures on g2 are kind of restrained in terms of the rooks uh, so is this enough for black it looks like a very entertaining position to have with the black pieces bishop d2 king f7 and in fact white gives up the bishop here now with bishop takes d3 and that's pretty committal of course if we look at an alternative black could build up and get this kind of scenario where it's you know it's it's getting tricky here uh there's possibilities uh which which are looking quite nasty like e3 and knight takes f4 now because the rook supports e3 and if so white might have to give up the bishop pair anyway there and it's still under good circumstances for black there's lots of possibilities here including knight takes h3 as well as other things so uh we have actually white just deciding giving giving up the bishop pair here knight takes and now king h2 if white wants to be too uh greedy then the rooks double and it's difficult to defend f uh, g2 with either rook f2 or rook b2 the knight's doing a good job keeping them out and if g4 then uh, f takes this position is going to be uh very nice for black so king h2 not taking a5 for the moment rook cg8 which you want now rook g3 which does support the idea of e3 and the knight is also keeping a rook out of e1 so it's actually difficult this this knight is really quite functionally useful the bishop takes this pawn e3 so yes what is going on here for the moment black is two pawns down but with gigantic positional compensation we have bishop e1 if rook b f1 then e2 and then e1 and that's going to be fantastic for black so bishop e1 we have knight takes f4 only a pawn down and offering an exchange here this cannot be taken rook b2 was played if taking uh, it's a disaster after here knight d3 threatens checkmate if here uh, for example king f6 this position with e2 is winning material simply uh, it's going to be winning material so uh, rook b2 that's immune that uh, rook knight d3 we have rook e2 king f6 rook f1 knight takes e1 
and we have a real bind on the possession here in this end game after f4 so uh, the ghost of the central knight is now being replaced with these really nicely entrenched pawns white is very passive in this end game should white deserve to lose this a pawn up what is your opinion here does white deserve to lose this particular position the king you could argue the king's super aggressive compared to this king uh, this past pawn is really holding down an entire rook. Uh, we have rook b8, rook a2. White does have this past pawn to be used. Rook g7, a5. Rook a7, rook f1. The king comes to support these pawns. Uh, rook d1. We have the possibility of check and taking here, but king e4. Rook d5. Rook e8. Okay, the rook just goes back and here, putting pressure on that pawn. And yes, we have some interesting high level maneuvers in this rook and pawn ending. Rook d3 here, rook a4. So giving up b3 there. It, <laughs> it's, it looks far too dangerous, uh, this position, because of these pawns, intuitively, anyway, because, you know. There's things like rook d2 and the king might help this pawn queen. So uh, this seems a bit desperate though. Uh, rook takes b3, but rook a2, rook d3, rook c3, taking c4. Yeah, white looks on helplessly as Leela restores uh, not just the material balance, but now is a pawn up. Rather cruel, uh, this end game. Uh, now this pawn can easily be stopped. Okay, is there enough to win this position or is it some technical draw? Well, actually, uh, it's uh, pretty difficult here. This stops the king from stopping the pawn. And the king comes to assist the c pawn. And the game ended here, actually. Uh, the technique here, if king c3, the technique to win would involve something like this. And if here, then we play the check and then the king can come to d1. And that'll be absolutely queening next and winning. So I'll take you back to the game end possession. So I thought that was a rather fascinating positional pawn sacrifice. Uh, it shows something quite important, actually, that as human players, I think we would be tempted because of the potential liability of d6 to play c takes and then we're we're getting other downsides instead by using either e4 or c4 once we take on d5 so actually by just giving up the d6 pawn just making sure we've got a pawn on c6 and trying to maximize our knights as this game showed this is a really interesting positional pawn sacrifice game which uh, i think you know could be part of positional armory uh, understanding in our own games uh, so Leela going, you know, one or two pawns down potentially, but fantastic piece play and aggressive king in the end game is a, a common theme as well occurring. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this game and got something out of it, uh, an idea there, an inspiration for positional pawn sacrifices and central knights and blockades. Uh, there's a modern defense course, a full blown course, at Kings Crusher TV slash modern dash defense but if you want a free taster there's a free short and sweet uh, version of that absolutely free the core lines including mad dog variation which we've touched on a bit now and the austrian attack so so king's crush tv slash modern is for the free version or modern dash defense for the full-blown course okay thanks very much